Hey, I didn't scare you away with part one of this two-part series on 3D printers for lure makers. Now, you've decided you're all in, you're gonna learn some software, it's gonna be great, but you need to figure out which type of printer to get. We're gonna go over the difference between FDM printers and resin printers, and specifically how those differences relate to lure making. First up is ease of use and maintenance. So FDM printers are a little more uh, fidgety, I would say. They have more moving parts. They have three different motors. They move on three different axes. Axi, uh. There's a, a, an extruder, you got filaments, you got tubes that feed the filament through there. Uh, you got a heater block, you got nozzles. There's just a lot more parts involved. Uh, not to mention the controller on the printer itself. I would say typically you're gonna have a little more maintenance and upkeep with an FDM printer than you are with a resin printer. Resin printers pretty much have one axis that they move on, uh, the Z axis up and down, but the maintenance and the replacement parts on the resin printer are typically larger. Uh, what most people don't realize is the actual LCD screen itself is a consumable. They're rated for generally around a thousand hours of print time. That can, you can eat that up relatively quickly if you're printing every day, for example. And they are replaceable and that, I don't wanna say it's hard, but it's rather involved, right? You have to literally pull the screen out, put the new screen in and connect it. And also resin 3D printers in the vat have what's called a FEP sheet, which is a uh, piece of plastic uh, that's kind of like a drum. If you ever replaced a drum head, it's probably pretty similar to that, but there's a lot of screws involved. You unscrew it and you put it in there. Overall, I think resin wins here uh, for the machine itself. Getting a resin printer out of the box, plug it in, you're pretty much good to go with a quick level. So let's talk about software that you need to actually take the models and convert them into uh, a format called G-Code that the printers both understand. Uh, that software is called Slicer Software, and there's a, there's a lot of different uh, Slicer softwares you can use. I'm just gonna kind of touch on the two main ones. And for FDM printers, that's Cura. And for uh, resin printers, that's generally a software called Cheetubox. So when comparing the two, Cura is much more uh, refined, much more evolved. As I mentioned before, FDM printers have been around for quite some time. So they've had a lot of time to figure out uh, the software, what makes it easy to use, et cetera. Um, I would say you can pretty much get an FDM printer and Cura and download the configuration file from the manufacturer and get successful prints uh, kind of right out of the box there. It's pretty straightforward. The, the support structures that hold up the models as you're printing them are fairly well understood and the automatic generation of those support structures is pretty solid. On resin printers, you have a software called Cheetubox that is relatively young. It is open source and again, it's free just like Cura, but it's a little less evolved. And I think that just really speaks to the kind of relative newness of resin 3D printers in the home end user market. It is okay. The automatic supports, which are even a little more critical in resin than they are in FDM, uh, don't really work that well. You can, you can mess up pretty easily and get failed prints. So with Slicer software, I'd have to give the benefit to FDM. It's a little bit easier to use, uh, less chance of making mistakes. All right, let's talk about post-processing. What do you do after the print is done? FDM, you pretty much pop it off the build plate and you're good to go. You might need to remove some support structures that aren't part of the print, but you're, you're pretty much ready to do your next steps on your print, whether that be painting, epoxy, or just straight up use it in, in the case of, you know, like my 3D printed kayak handle. So this is where resin 3D printers have a major downside. When I get done with a print, when a print finishes, I have to take the build plate out of the printer. The build plate and the print are covered with uncured resin, which is uh, hazardous if not downright toxic. Uh, I have to be wearing gloves at all times. If I get any of this on my skin or in my eyes, it's gonna cause me major issues. I have to pop that print off of the build plate, usually with some sort of scraper. Then it needs to go into an isopropyl alcohol or some other chemical bath to, again, clean off all this uncured resin. Gonna, I'm gonna go through multiple cycles of this cleaning depending on the resin you have. And then I have to put it into a curing chamber or I need exposure to UV light. So you can do this in the sun sometimes. Again, these are all things that are uh, maybe you're used to if you've been dealing with plastisol somewhat, but it is a step above plastisol in terms of hazard and toxicity and just general involvement in the process. So clearly FDM wins here. All right, next up is print quality. 
This is where resin 3D printers really shine. They can produce amazing, amazing details. So to give you an example, a layer line on an FDM print, uh, which is basically, you know, they go side to side building up these layers, is kind of best case scenario, uh, 0.12 millimeters high. On my Elegoo Saturn resin 3D printer, in most 4K resin 3D printers, it is 0 0.05 millimeters high. I think that's about the width of a human hair. I could be making this up, but I think that's correct. And so you can render amazing a level of details, right? One of the first kind of main use cases for resin 3D printing at home was printing detailed miniatures. So, you know, I print out a Baby Yoda because everybody has to have a, a, a Baby Yoda, a Grogu, sorry. And look at the detail. I mean, this is a, a stunning coming out of a print. If you look at the detail of this lure mold here, one, the black one is an FDM print, which still looks pretty good, but next to the resin print here, it's just not even close, right? The detail is absolutely stunning and something that uh, no FDM printer can really reproduce. All right, let's talk about print speed. And this one is a little bit tricky to work with. Uh, if you have a single small part, typically uh, an FDM printer is gonna be faster at doing that. As the parts get bigger, a lot of different factors come into play. The, the factor for resin prints on how long they're gonna take is really how high they are on the Z-axis, right? So if you think about how they work, they basically print, expose, the, the bottom of the print to UV light, move up, move down, expose, move up, move down, expose. So the number of those times it has to move up and down is how long it's gonna take to print. If you take a lure mold, for example, that is about this high, you print it completely flat, it's gonna print pretty quickly. If you angle it at like a, about a 45 degree angle, it's gonna be much taller and it's gonna be much longer to print. The print I'm showing you here now took 18 hours to print. It doesn't really bother me that much. It runs overnight for the majority of the time and it's pretty simple, I don't need to watch it. Now, if you take that same print and put it on an FDM printer, uh, it's gonna take maybe five hours. Now, where it gets even trickier is if you have a bunch of small parts. For example, on this RAM mount that I'm printing on my FDM printer, that took, I think, roughly eight hours. If I did the same print on an FDM printer, it would take you know roughly four hours. Again, because it's just dictated by the height. I can fill up the entire build plate with lures and stuff and print them all off in kind of one shot and it's gonna take as long as the longest lure is, uh, for example, on a resin printer. So that one's a little bit tricky. Um, I just call it a wash because it's really difficult to figure out. Uh, it all totally depends on what you're printing and how you orientate your print. All right, so what are the conclusions here? Oh man, I wish I had a solid answer for you, but it really depends. I would say if you are solely looking at making hard plastic lures, twitch baits, stick baits, crank baits, uh, you can easily use a FDM style printer. It'll produce uh, basically the shell for you, which then you can process either by sanding, painting, and then putting resin on top of, and you'll get a smooth finish there. If you're looking at producing highly detailed baits, molds for soft plastics, uh, even mold masters for soft plastics, then you really have to consider resin 3D printing, uh, especially if you like that detail. If you're printing things that uh, don't have a lot of detail, then maybe you can get away with an FDM printer. But most of us like that detail in our baits, even though I don't think it matters at all to the fish, it produces a much higher quality look and feel to a lure. And that way you have to really look at resin 3D printing hard. Or if you're like me, you're gonna end up with both of them eventually anyways. And that's just kind of where I ended up. And I use them both for their strengths. If you wanna see the results of a 3D printed resin soft plastic mold, click here. Otherwise, click on the video below it because that's what YouTube thinks you wanna watch. Thanks guys, take care.